Word games are often spellbound by letters, but I'm excited to explore the deeper narrative where meanings and connections take center stage. I'm Michael Duma from Idea Games, and today we're venturing into the innovative and inclusive realm of word meaning games. Word meaning games can incorporate diverse topics and cultural references. And building them is even more possible these days because AI can accelerate the brainstorming and auditing of our content. But this journey is not without its hurdles. Both humans and AI can introduce faux pas and unanticipated offenses. So when I say word meaning games, what am I not talking about? Word meaning games stand apart from the behemoth market of spelling games, and they carve a niche that emphasizes understanding and connections over mere letter arrangement. Crossword puzzles. In the 1920s, they were what we call viral today, and they've been the staple in the puzzle world ever since. Solving answers from clues with partial letters guiding the way. Crosswords work great on paper, and many people like them on digital also. But the interesting thing to me about word games, about word meaning games, is how can they be more inclusive, where players from many backgrounds can feel seen in the content. They can, they can have touchstones that ring true to them. It also means avoiding inadvertent offenses that could happen. The magic of digital word games is that the content can be way more vast than anything on paper. Game designs can allow for multiple pathways to victory, and the game can combine wordplay mechanics with other types of mechanics. But let's go back to crosswords. If you've ever noticed that crosswords tend to be male, white, middle-aged or older, heterosexual, you're not alone. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that that's what players tend to want and that's what the constructors tend to provide. Easy words are boring, and hard words tend to be niche. There's no way to give everybody hard words that they probably know. So crosswords have a paradox because they're a single solution game. I think that to include more people, a game design has to have multiple pathways to victory. That way players can draw on what they know, and players don't lose just because they don't know niche topics from other cultures. But expansiveness brings its own set of challenges. Unintended offenses can occur. So I want to show you some real examples that we encountered. Eggs and bacon. French toast, McMuffin, sausage, cornflakes, pancakes. What's wrong with this? Our intent here was to depict comforting and familiar everyday foods. However, our initial choice of foods represented a narrow cultural representation. What about other countries? How would you solve this? How would you diversify the narrative with more foods? Or is that too unwieldy, foods of the whole world? Maybe we should focus on dumplings of the world instead. Bride, groom, Husband, wife, wedding, anniversary? The conventional depiction of marriage often overlooks diverse relationship structures. It's obvious in retrospect. So let's look beyond heteronormative relationships. Incorporating terms like partner, romance, or household helps create a more inclusive narrative. Manicure, pedicure, chick flicks, gossip magazines, romance novels, and bubble baths. This was one of our first topics we ever put in the game, and it was called Guilty Pleasures. But the term guilty pleasures and the associated words inadvertently reinforce gender stereotypes. It's a playful attempt that's actually insensitive. Somehow, it's not really a guilty pleasure when dudes go fishing. So how can this be amended? Perhaps by redefining the topic to treat yourself and diversifying the terms. Once we saw the problem, we could embrace positivity and self-indulgence and move away from the notion of guilt. Anasi, Dracula, Odin, Goddess Lakshmi, Medusa, Sun Wukong, Thor, or Zeus, Zulong. These are fantastical figures, but one of them is not like the others. Here we had an opposites level and a problem hid from us for a while. The theme was intended to cover non-historical people. However, including a revered Hindu goddess alongside Dracula was a misstep. Context matters. Taking advice from individuals connected to Hindu culture helped us to fix this. Replacing Lakshmi with Hanuman, a popular figure that's playful, was a more respectful choice. Inclusivity in word games extends to various domains. Whether it's cultural, racial, or geographical representation, there's a breadth of diversity to be explored and included in our games. But despite our efforts, there can still be unanticipated offenses. It's a learning curve, and the key is to be responsive and willing to adapt our content. 
In our game design, we don't want players to have an option shoved in their face to match up two terms in a way that could cause offense. For example, buckwheat is a great tasty grain, but paired up wrong, it's a racial slur. Same for red, for Oreo, for banana, or the wrong kind of fairy. Moving on to the innovation aspect, let's delve into how word association games like the New York Times New Connections and our other wordly are pushing the envelope. Connections is known for its short sessions and emphasis on word meanings. It's a different approach compared to traditional games. The player matches up four sets of four words. Part of the challenge is when words can be in more than one set, and then there's wordplay and puns. Our game, Otherwordly, has longer sessions, mashes up word associations with missing letters, projectile physics, inclusive design, and adaptive gameplay. And it's a different type of experience. Players connect related words. They maneuver through obstacles like space debris and explosive drones. And they work to save the avatars of AlphaZord Prime. Here's a minute of our game trailer. This is Otherwordly, a word puzzler that reimagines wordplay. Navigate a wide range of themes that come from around the neighborhood and around the globe. And those minds? Ouch! Watch out! Here we're matching opposites to free a trapped space penguin. We're almost there. But what's this word? Ah, protege. Interesting. That's the opposite of teacher. Nailed it! Other Wordly's vocabulary difficulty adapts to you. Use auto level for a balanced challenge or set your own pace with the manual challenge level. Play two-handed or with one finger. Employ antimatter vortexes as your strategic weapons, clearing localized obstacles and unwanted words in a flash. Boom! Enjoy the tranquility of the main game, or heat up the action in challenge mode, where it's a race against time to match words and collect candy. The adorable critters of Alphazoid Prime need your help. Unlock unique avatars like Lexiana the Winged Kitty, Astrophella the Lexasar, and others to join your team on this galactic word quest. One of the foremost ways to meet your audience where they are in a word game is to meet their vocabulary knowledge. It's not fun to play with simplistic words, and it's not fun when you can't read the words. A billion and a half people speak English, give or take, and most speak it as a second or third language. People vary, of course, in their age, their education, reading habits, personal interests. Non-native English speakers' vocabulary size varies widely. Conversational vocabulary usually comprises just about 4,000 words. Among native English speakers, there's a huge variation by age. And 10 and 90% percentiles are at a huge gulf. The top 10% knows twice as many words as the bottom 10%. Classifying words as easy or hard is not straightforward. The perceived difficulty of a word really varies from person to person. Our grading system comprises 16 distinct difficulty levels. Although grading can be somewhat arbitrary, it helps in categorizing words and tailoring the gameplay experience. But how do you level people? We employ a short, fast calibration at the beginning of gameplay during onboarding to gauge the player's vocabulary level. This ensures that the words that are on screen resonate with the player's vocabulary knowledge. Who's this frog? Try asking a seven-year-old. Want to feel old? Ask them about Miss Piggy. Different demographics come with unique sets of vocabulary. Kids versus adults is a big divide here. Pop culture references can either engage or alienate players depending on their familiarity with the topics. The same is true about American heritage. Upon reflection, we gave players a toggle option. If you don't know all the U.S. state capitals and the famous first ladies, you can turn that stuff off. To engage players with word association, the sky's the limit. Game designers can be really creative about how players connect related words, the vibe of their game, the core loops. I like multitasking, so our game incorporates different mechanics like projectile physics to add a layer of strategy and physical skill. Game designers can also explore different word plays like homonyms or split compound words to add complexity and fun. The potential impact of word meaning games extends beyond mere entertainment. They have the potential to educate, broaden perspectives, and foster empathy and inclusivity. 
Tackling meaningful topics within the gameplay can create a deeper connection with players and possibly spark discussions on important issues. But can a word game impact players? Can gameplay enhance cognitive skills, facilitate cultural broadening and social awareness? Can it have an impact that's at all more profound than a good book or a good movie? Right now, we're asking these questions as part of a National Science Foundation SBIR grant, which is exploring AI to tackle most of the questions that we've talked about, and also look at cognitive and pro-social impacts. I'd really love your ideas. If you have some thoughts about w what kind of an impact can playing a game like this actually have, I know what our goals are, but what are our impacts? So I submitted to this showcase and created this presentation partially to evangelize word meaning games, partially to share some of these complexities that I thought were interesting, but really also to invite your insights. So I'm serious about this. If you'd like to try playing and you've got an iPhone or iPad, you can sign up for the beta and we'll send you a link later. Or if you email me directly, I can send you a test flight link sooner. Thank you. I appreciate your time and your attention, and I look forward to the innovative and inclusive realm of word-meaning games in the future.